This podcast contains adult themes, sexual content, and strong language. If you can't handle that, you should probably leave. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. Welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hosts, Rachel and Christopher. It has been a bit since we've been on, so you should probably say hello. Yeah, but nobody's going to notice it's been a bit because we're releasing this later. But so. I have noticed, and I yeah, feel the Yeah, I don't even remember what gap. book we're reading. Uh, okay, you see, exactly. I don't exactly. remember any of this. So, so uh, as most of you don't know, I was out sick during the holidays, it's been a rough ride, as it typically is in the, Chris, in the in Christopher and I's bedroom, but we enjoyed it, and we're here. So, um, to remind you... <laughs> that is corny, I like it. <laughs> so, to remind you, we are reading a book by Julie Garwood, One Pink Rose. It is the first novel of The Claiborne Brides. So far, it's not a favorite. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have a favorite. This is the second book we've read all together in our episodes. And kicker, I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to hear this before the event, but we have an event coming up January 21st of 2023 where we're going to get to record an episode live. I'm excited and nervous. I don't know if that makes me horny or what. (laughs) (laughs) I'm definitely not dry. I don't know. I'm going to have to turn my back to the audience. That's fine. Put your glasses on. Get real drunk. All right, so here's your recap so you remember. Yeah. The last thing we read was Emily and Travis, the main characters in this book, were traveling so that Travis could get Emily to her soon-to-be husband. Okay, that's right. And they okay. got on the train station. She shot at him. That's, we're far past that. Right, right. I'm just yes. trying to remember. So they've gotten to a hotel, mm-hmm. motel, house, whatever, and there were some drunks that showed up. Oh, uh, yeah, as the three retarded triplets, right? Can't yeah. They try to fucking hillbilly rape them. Yes. You okay. got to basically. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was not. Yeah, you got to make out with the mic. Uh-huh. Um, I always get nervous touching this with my mouth. Don't touch it with your I'm mouth. I'm not just meaning just to, but you just kind of it. pushed it in my face. Well, that's what you do to me. Well, <laughs> it's a little different. I know. I like it. All right. So, um, Millie. This is, is a lot bigger, rounder, and blacker than. <laughs> <laughs> But. Well, whatever. I like yours best. <laughs> um, so what you have to remember is John and Millie are the people that own this hotel. So they're in this hotel when these drunks come in and start messing with Travis and uh, Emily. Right. They start like flicking him on his wiener. And fucking no, well, we don't know. Hair and shit. No, we don't know. No. As far as we know. Okay. The drunks came in. Travis and John tried to. Who's John? The other guy that owns the place. Okay, Travis and Emily are the main characters. Right, they're the ones traveling to meet the O'Toole. Oh, right. Mr. O'Toole. <laughs> John and Millie own the motel hotel. Okay, got you. And okay. they're visiting. John and Travis mm. went outside to try to stop the drunks from being idiots, but a couple of them got into the kitchen where Millie, John's wife, and Emily were trying to clean up the kitchen. Mm. Okay, and the drunks basically just wanted to get to the liquor cabinet. And they called Emily a heifer, wanted to get her out of the way. She started talking shit. This enraged them. And enraged. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so basically Emily tried to knock a guy out with a frying pan. And oh, then yeah. okay, the yeah, very end, what we really ended on was he starts coming at her with a knife. Okay. And then you have no idea what happens after. Oh that. yeah, so we've been on this, uh, we've been on this cliff for a few weeks. Yeah, now. yeah, we've yeah. been on this Surprised journey, this I've, ride. Surprised that old, I forgot what was happening. The old Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> this book, this book is. Uh, what was the, this? Okay. Dr- is this dry as the desert they're in? Jeez. Whatever. I don't was even. It th- wasn't Rose. Rose is a dumpster baby, right? No. Okay. Later going to be the main. So Mama be Rose. Titled after her. Mama Rose is the one that's supposedly interfering in her son's lives. Yeah, meddling Travis, on behalf of the Lord, right? Yes. The sex Gods. On the behalf of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, and, 
you know, Travis has a vendetta against this guy named Daniel Ryan. So on this... Because he fucked Rose. No, because he has his compass that was a gift from his mother. I thought that was just a metaphor for he fucked his mom. No, but it could be, I guess. But uh, so anyway, all that the book has been about is Travis and Emily getting to know each other. And there's a lot of back and forth. As we've seen with all these books, everybody argues into bed. Uh, you know, whatever. Okay. I don't know if that's a good, like, head start to the relationship, but whatever. So we're on chapter seven. This is our third installment of this book. And this is how it starts. He never touched her. <laughs> and when I started rereading this, I thought it meant Travis never touched her and it was going to get sexy. But then I was like, oh, shit, it's the drunk guy. Uh. <laughs> so, so it says he never touched her. One second she was staring at his ugly expression. And the next she was looking at Travis's broad back. Oh, uh-oh. So, see, the kicker was we were worried about Travis and John. We hadn't seen him during this whole kitchen scene, and here he is coming back. So let me Jumped re- in the way, huh? Well, let me read to you so you can get back into the groove. Uh-huh. All right. He seemed to have appeared out of thin air, and though she didn't have the faintest idea how he'd managed to get in front of her without making a sound, she was so happy to see him. She patted his back. Like, seriously, this is a high... running out with a knife? She's patting back? Yeah, like, what are you doing? So the odds, after all, he just improved considerably. Emily moved to his side just in time to see his fist strike Carter below his chin. Mm. The force behind the blow was so powerful it sent him flying out the doorway through the screen. He landed on his back in the grass with his legs draped over Millie's butter churn. I feel like he took the butter churn up the butt. The butter turn you know travis wanted to hit him again he was so furious he couldn't but he knocked him 45 yards outside the front house yeah how can you get him again travis yeah that's crazy shit uh let's see so when jack oh shit wait did i just fuck up this name the whole time and i was thinking it was john and it's actually jack (gasps) oh No, 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 no. Okay, Jack. One-Eyed Jack. Remember One-Eyed Jack? No. Okay, so there was a bet between Travis and Emily that she couldn't swoon a man by acting like a timid bird. Oh, uh, yeah. He was one a fucking, I'd, like... It, it, was a tr- it was a trick. Yeah, yeah. He lived... He was... He was a... Something was up with him, right? He was just funky and dirty. Yeah, gross. And, uh, stuff like that, so... Um, but Emily likes him all right, and I guess now he's, like, has... At first, he had something against Travis, but now it seems like they got each other's backs, mm-hmm. you know, when the situation calls for it. I guess, yeah, best of friends. Yeah, okay, so when Jack... Trying to compete for the same tunnel, aren't they? Why compete when you can both get in? Uh, we'll see how Emily takes it. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably pretty well. Uh, so when Jack told him there were two men in the kitchen threatening Emily, Travis became enraged. He got scared, too, and that enraged him all the more. Oh. His, <laughs> so enraged. I'm in. Enra- I'm enraged and engorged. Mm, we can see your arrangement. <laughs> um, when he saw the son of a bitch waving a knife in Emily's face, something snapped inside him. I don't and know he why suddenly... he's got to say about the dude's mom. Like <laughs> she didn't wave the knife. Well, maybe she was a knife waver. Mm, maybe learn Ter- behavior. He wanted to tear the attacker apart limb from limb, limb by limb. Oh. Is it? But it seems like it's supposed to be limb from limb. How do you tear apart limb by limb? Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's weird. Well, recently when I played Doom, one of the demons tore off my limbs and then hit me with them. That's pretty it was good. offensive. It's good uh, the idea still appealed to him. For a full minute, kept his attention. For a full minute, he kept his attention on the man he'd knocked senseless. So he had hit the guy, right? And it knocked mm-hmm. him down. Uh, Emily clubbed one with a fucking... That was first. Right. But so he didn't knock so him out. two out of three are down. He's got head trauma for sure. Okay. So he was out cold, and Travis finally accepted the fact that he wasn't going to get to beat the hell out of him. He turned around, put his hands on Emily's shoulders, cool. and asked her to so look up at him. Put his hands on Emily. That's what usually when you push me down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's yeah, like, but he's not going to because she's a... Uh, she's uh, a lady. She's a clam- lady yeah so he said are you all right his voice was a rough whisper he didn't hurt you did he no he didn't hurt me mm-hmm. so <laughs> so uh let's see we are at let's see 91 i wanted to skip ahead because then they just start talking i'm usually skipping the crap where they're repeating shit we already know because that yeah, happens a cool. lot where they go in and they have a whole fucking conversation mm-hmm. about the shit they just explained to us so while i have to read this fucking book i have to read the same thing twice in two different contexts in the mind and in a conversation well i don't like it yeah just i don't like it i'm skipping ahead i'm skipping ahead so here we are everybody's chilled out um john millie's husband Mm. the people that own this Mm -hmm. place drew 
her attention when he pulled out a chair and sat huh. down next to his <laughs> wife. Her attention being Emily. He drew Emily's attention. By pulling his dick out. Wait, <laughs> pulled, a chair out. Pulled out a chair and sat down next to his wife. Mm. Emily watched him oh. put his hand oh. on top of Millie's. Oh. And it was that simple little gesture of affection that proved to be her own undoing. Ooh. Yeah, I just wanted to leave you on with the way weird reading. <laughs> so he's just sitting down and ha- putting his hand on his wife's hand. Slowly S- inching it back towards himself. Put it down under the table. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when you have a near-death experience. Yeah, like, well, I'm getting a handy under this dinner table. gets you excited. <laughs> Almost dying. Hey, did yeah. you ever see the movie? I know that we're cutting off pretty quick, but did you ever see that movie? And I cannot please somebody maybe in comments somewhere or something or write to us in a letter. Um, it was a movie about a chick that started dating this sketchy guy and they went to a carnival and she jacked him off on the roller coaster and then later he came to her house and then he started being a real sketch. I don't think I've seen that. It's like a kind of like sexy rapey type thing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we love that, those. Nothing sexier than... Graping. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. Look, been there, done that. It's all right. All right, so... <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, sorry. All right, so (laughs) she was suddenly so consumed with such hot, painful longings for Travis, she wanted to weep. Her ovaries hurt so bad she had to cry? That's her period. Dang. She couldn't understand what was happening to her. She had never had lustful, carnal thoughts before, but she was certainly having them now. And how was that possible? Why was she yearning for something she had never experienced? Mm -hmm. Mm. Emily made the mistake of looking at the man who was responsible for her misery. The sight of him only intensified her erotic thoughts, and she hurried to look away. She wasn't quite quick enough, though. She's going to explode in her fucking... What kind of dress diaper? Well, I wish we knew what that was called. I I watch enough TikToks of people with old gowns on. I should know the name, but whatever. So, (laughs) um, all right. So skip ahead. Millie and John and Travis and Emily are all talking in the kitchen again. Oh, and Lord, it was hot in the kitchen. John, oh Lord, was it? <laughs> John, what took you and Travis so long to get in here? Uh, Millie asked. Fucking rubbing each other and uh, checking each other for ticks. And we had our hands full. Oh, yeah. Dutch rudders. Yes, yeah, stop doing this. Put the dick in your face. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's a mic. All right, so um, we had our hands full. That's what we took. That's what took us so long. He replied. Corrigan told me five men were heading this way, but he was wrong about the number. There were eight of them out front trying to get inside, and all but two were stinking Uh, drunk. Who could count back then? (laughs) We didn't know a couple of others were sneaking up on the back door. (laughs) I sure did itch to shoot them, Millie. Itching on the back door? Oh, you should get that looked at. Two of them are coming? What held you back, she asked. Four of them decided to take Travis on. Oh, Hell shit. Hell yeah. Travis better get torn And up. all at the same time. All right. So. Uh, how do you handle that, Travis? <laughs> Apparently not well. He was enraged. Uh, so they came at him from every direction. Bukaki. I can't do this. Um, ga- it's more gangbang. Oh. Gangbang DP. Um, they came at him from every direction, putting him right in the thick of it. Oh, shit. Did Julie know what she was Yeah, Julie, have you ever played Soggy Biscuits? (laughs) And why does Travis have to be the biscuit? (laughs) Because he's a big, strong man, and people like that, you know? You just want to peg him right in the ass. I guess so. That's why I try to stay a sloppy fucking lazy shit all my life. Well, I like letting you do it to me, so whatever works. Perfect. So we are now at a place where, oh, I got to read almost all of this shit. Oh, okay. So here's where we're at. So they are actually going to let some of these drunks sleep, I guess, (laughs) uh, in the living room or outside or something. I don't know. They're not trying to get rid of them, you know? So, but Travis wants to protect Emily over Uh, throughout the night so he's basically going to post up outside her door Mm -hmm. you know um he has the room i think across from her so they start conversing about that so um his voice dropped to a whisper if you need anything let me know thank you good night emily good night travis she whispered back and still he didn't move she took a step closer to him it's hot in here isn't it are you hot yes Uh me too where are you sleeping Close by, he answered. I'll hear you if you call out. 
Remember when you used to hear me call out when I'm taking a shower? Mm-hmm. Right. It's because you're jerking yourself off. Yeah. I was trying to get you in there. Yep. All right. So, <laughs> if you don't know, Chris and I were friends for a long time, and I really tried to lure him into that relationship hard, and I did. <laughs> so, she said, I won't. And he said, but if you do, and she said, you'll hear me. Yes, I'll try not to bother you. His smile was devastatingly appealing. I'm already bothered, Emily, and from the way you're looking at me, I'd say you're real bothered, too. She didn't try to pretend she didn't know what he was talking about. She took another step toward him just as he moved toward her, and suddenly she was in his arms, and she was kissing him with all the passion she had inside her. One kiss wasn't enough. Frantic to get as close to him as possible, she wrapped her arms around his neck. Like, what? (laughs) I'm not sure... (laughs) I'm, I'm already going to choke you out, motherfucker. <laughs> it's time for the rear naked joke. <laughs> She's Better got the hooks naked. in. She's pulling it around. They got didn't it call in it tight. Rear naked for no reason. Travis already got the rear naked choke from them guys outside. Yeah, Sally like took on four of them. <laughs> when I heard, he might be tired. <laughs> he couldn't get enough of her. He lifted her up so she was pressed tight against him, but the feeling he wanted was dulled by their clothing. Because, you know, oh, back yeah, then they had like a thousand pieces on. Yeah, it was made out of dead animals and he shit. He groaned in frustration and began to take her clothes off, but his mouth never left hers she was so hot and willing and god but she tasted wonderful to him i don't understand why and god and god was god there with them Probably, yeah know. he's always present in the anyway <laughs> he's in the corner chair <laughs> just making sure this is all legal everybody <laughs> <laughs> all right so he fucking checklist right there okay <laughs> this is okay keep I'll, it missionary i will allow this <laughs> <laughs> that's like the judges in the ufc He unbuttoned her blouse, tore it free of her waistband, and then pushed the straps of her undergarment down over her shoulders. Now, what they're not telling you is how long that process took, because think about the clothes back then. Yeah, his boner ran away. Yeah, like, like, God, I need need another shot. His hands moved beneath the fabric and began to stroke her breast. I really like when you do that to me. The feel of her smooth skin against the calluses on his hands pushed his control further away. She made him so hot for her, he could barely think now. He wanted her more than he'd ever wanted any other woman You're before. About to shoot in his pants, dude. Yeah, it's like, my, well... Sorry, my gun never goes off. Too bad. Travis kicked the door shut with his foot, forced himself to pull back from her, and then told her in no certain... Uh, in no uncertain terms, what he wanted to do to her. If you touch me, you're going to throw you out that window. <laughs> he had to hold her up when he was finished. Yes or no, Emily, he demanded. She didn't want to make the decision. He was forcing her to be accountable for her own actions. Oh, my God. And she would much rather have been swept off her feet instead. So see the graping. All right. Admitting the truth helped her come to her senses. She pushed away from him and shook her head. No, we can't. I want to, Travis, but it wouldn't be right. Yeah, that's right. Mr. I O'Toole immediately is got pissed. Waiting. He's on the he's on the tracks right now with his watch. O'Toole's on the wait list Just for her looking. Vagine. Anyway, yeah, I immediately got pissed at this point. I was like, "Fuck you, Julie Garwood! Like, why did you stop?" And I think Julie is still alive. So out out there, Julie Garwood, you sure know how to make us suspenseful. I don't think that's a word. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh. God. So admitting, okay, wait, I was already there. She was panting now and still couldn't seem to draw a deep breath. She threaded her fingers through her hair in acute frustration. His own frustration made him sound angry. Because of O'Toole? Mm. I don't know if that's the right voice. Because of O'Toole. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right. She literally goes, who? Who? Yeah, bitch. He clenched his jaw tight. The man you're going to marry. She noticed her blouse was open and frantically rebuttoned it. I used to have morals until I met you, Travis. I don't know what's happened to me. Lust happened. That's all there is to it, Emily. The devil got you. (laughs) She said, don't be angry with me. He said, I'm not angry with you. I never should have let it go this far. He pulled the door open, then turned back to her. You wanted me, didn't you? And I don't really know. Look, okay, these past couple paragraphs, I had trouble understanding who was who. So I don't even know if she said that or if he said that. And then one of them said, you know I did. I don't understand. He saw the tears in her eyes and was heartless to them. Mm. You know what I think? When you're in bed with O'Toole, you're going to be thinking about me. Oh, The door brutal. slammed shut mm. on his prophecy. Damn. A damn. All right. So it's getting cold in here. I'm nipping. All right. Okay. So I think one of the guys started 
Wait, no. The notion of shooting him in the backside where... Oh, she's pissed at Travis, all right? She's in her bedroom. They shut the door. She's supposed to be going to bed. I don't think she knows. No, she doesn't know at this point that he's going to try to watch her door still. But she's thinking in her head, like, I'm mad at him for making me want him. So she said the notion of shooting him in the backside where she was certain his brain was located, Ooh. was going through her mind. She, she threw I, off the covers like and shooting, started... I like shooting you in the back. <laughs> so she's pacing around the room, and um, she's like, what in heaven's name was she going to do about Mr. O'Toole? Uh, she couldn't marry him, of course. Just reach your hand down your pants and flick that little thing for a couple minutes. Yeah, feel did they not better. know what handheld mm-hmm. masturbation? No, like dude, hand, they hand, only hand. ever read the Bible. It's DIY, baby. It's <laughs> just... Um, okay, so ba, 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 la, 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 la. whispers coming from the hallway turned her attention. She tiptoed over to the door, leaned against it, and then heard what sounded like a gun being cocked. <laughs> there were at least two men in the corridor, perhaps as many as three. <laughs> One of them was Travis, for she recognized his whisper. Whoever he had spoken to left in quite a hurry and didn't try to be quiet about it. His boots pounded on the wooden floor as he retreated. She heard the door slam. She heard a door slam then. She didn't hear Travis leave, though. She battled her curiosity for a long minute and then decided to find out what he was doing. She was slowly turning the doorknob when he spoke to her. Go back to bed, Emily. Go back to bed, Emily. Yeah. She let out a yelp and jumped a good foot. She pulled the door open wider, forgetting for the moment that she was clad in only her nightgown. And when she saw Travis, she took a step back. He was right outside her door, sprawled on a chair. He looked comfortable. His head was resting against the door frame with his legs stretched out in front of him, one ankle over the other. Mm-hmm. All right, so, um, Travis, I have a bolt on my door. You don't have to worry about me. Go back to bed. Will you please turn around and look at me? I'm trying to explain that. He didn't let her finish. Are you in your nightgown? The question gave her pause. Yes. You won't be wearing it for long if I turn around. Do you want me to ha- be more ex- Sorry, God damn it. Do you want me to be more specific? No. Good night, Travis. I thought you'd see it my way. All right. So. What a bitch move, Travis. <laughs> well, that was not. Thought, no. Get uh, out of here. That passive aggressive shit. Well, I kind of. Look, no look, more it's respect been, for that wiener. Get the fuck out of here. You say that, but I feel like it sounds like something you would do. No. Because you were a gentleman that, in the beginning of a relationship. I told you not to look. He's you not didn't look. That. He's not doing that to be a gentleman. He's Things doing that to be like spiteful that. because she mm, wouldn't suck him off because of Mr. O'Toole. Yeah. He's being a bitch, dude. Yeah. You won't I play was, with my I tool. I pulled a power move in what we did. I know. And it was because it was totally unsolicited. You were just like, mm, I have some titties. Don't look at them. I was like, fine, I'm going to bed. Good and night. I was like, what? Yeah, what the hell? How did he actually went to sleep? That was like our first like outing. He was so romantic. <laughs> All right, so here is where we were. I feel like we're going to have to do a whole episode where we talk about how we got together and some of our kinky stories. That is not a book. What? We're reading books. I'm saying we're going to have to do our own spinoff podcast. Oh, oh, our own spinoff podcast. Yeah, our own personal sexy stories. We could write a book about them. I actually have a friend who I'm trying to encourage her to write some of our own short stories, so maybe that could be part of it. I think you sold me something about this. I did. Uh, okay, so here we are. Let's see. Let me remind myself where I am. Ba, ba, ba. He made Roscoe and Clifford remove their guns and toss them in the water trough and then made them do the same thing with their boots. Once they were finished, he ordered them to lie on their stomachs with their hands up. Oh, fuck, where am I? Ta- oh, shit. I skipped way ahead. I need to recap. All right, okay. So here's the deal. That was at the hotel. Emily and Travis leave the hotel the next day to head to Mr. O'Toole's. And they're fairly close. So we're there now. All right. They're pulling up the uh, fucking driveway. Strap in. After haven't had sex and then jerking off on the opposite sides of the same door. Exactly. There might be something kind of kinky about that. You want to try it later? (laughs) No. Ah! I think we should probably just get after it. Just stare at each other. Just look at each other right in the eye and don't touch. No, so, um, okay. Anywho, what happens... Oh, man, I can't believe I said to just skip to this. 113, 1 through 4. I'm crazy. I skipped some good stuff. 
I'll just explain it to you. Okay. So they ride up to this dingy, shitty looking house, right? Mm -hmm. And this crazy, filthy creature comes mm, running out. Mr. O'Toole. Mm. Hell They're not sure yet. And he's basically like, oh, hey, 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 what are y'all doing? Oh, I think they has noticed that, that tra somebody had a gun on him. I don't know if it was Mr. O'Toole or Travis felt like he saw somebody in the trees watching him or whatever. Okay, so they come up the drive. He's like, hey, you got my bride? Real trashy, real dirty, real filthy guy. Um, and Emily basically immediately reacts. She's like, oh, no, I'm I'm Mrs. Travis Claiborne. Because mm. she's already like, holy shit, if this is O'Toole, I fucked up. This is yeah. not a guy. Because if you remember, O'Toole was writing her letters after her original fiancé left her at the th uh Alter. Right, he was writing all those nasty love notes. Huh? Poems, okay, yeah, poems. and saying that he had a really nice house and a really nice job and blah, blah, blah. So she thought she was in for a treat. She gets to this fucking shack, and it's not what she expected. And so Travis is like eyeballing the tree line, and this guy's asking him all these questions about, well, have you have you seen so-and-so? You know, her name's em Emily Finnegan, and, and, and she so Emily starts lying. And she says that they actually spoke with an Emily Finnegan at that hotel back a ways. Mm. But they left. They told him that they left before she left. Okay. So uh, here's the deal. The other guy has to come out of the trees or something. I think that he's he's like, well, you got to get your guy out here, get the gun off of us or whether. Mr. O'Toole tells Travis and Emily that they intended on sharing her as a bride. Mm. And when they tell Mr. O'Toole and his brother that this is not the bride, they say, well, maybe we can get us two brides. Oh. So basically they're talking about killing Travis and taking this woman hostage and, you know, doing the nasty and then mm. waiting for Emily to get there and doing the same dang thing. Dang. I know these are bad guys. Trolls. They're assholes. So uh, here we are. Um, Travis saw the silver gleam coming from the tree to the east just as Clifford let out a shout. Shoot him down, Giddy! Travis's gun was out of his holster and firing before Clifford had finished bellowing the obscene order. A scream came from the trees, a branch snapped, and everyone but Travis turned to watch the brother's cohort crash to the ground. Mm. So there were three guys. Three of them. Yeah, and dude. He just smoked one. Yeah, because he already knew. So uh, Clifford and Roscoe. Clifford O'Toole and his brother Roscoe mm -hmm. were smart enough not to go for their weapons. Roscoe dropped the shotgun and put his hands in the air, but Clifford stubbornly kept his hand down and decides they were balled into fists. He killed Giddy, Roscoe muttered. That weren't no call for that, Clifford said. There weren't no call for that. The two brothers shared a nod and then began to slowly edge apart. They stopped when Travis cocked his gun. Take the lead down the hill, Travis told Emily. He didn't have to repeat himself. She was so terrified now she almost dropped the reins when she forced her mount to back up and turn around. Travis hadn't spared her a single glance from the moment he'd spotted the bastard hiding in the trees with his shotgun. Mm. So anyway, this was an unreally intense scene for me yeah, to read. Yeah, escalated. All right, so I got to read you the rest of this. He made Roscoe and Clifford remove their guns and toss them in the water trough and then made them do the same thing with their boots. Once they were finished, he ordered them to lie on their stomachs with their hands up over their heads. He still didn't take his gaze off them, trusting his horse to find his way down the path while he turned in his saddle so he could keep his gun trained on them. He didn't turn around until the brothers were out of sight, and when he did... He goaded his stallion into a full gallop. He reached Emily's side, slapped her mount on its hind Ooh. corners, and sent him flying into a gallop, too. Mm -hmm. He deliberately stayed behind her so that he could protect her back, and for that reason, he was an easy target. The shot still caught him by surprise. Oh, no. The bullet went into his back, and damn, but it burned. He could feel himself slipping to the side, and with his last ounce of strength, he threw himself forward. He grabbed hold of his horse's mane with his left hand and tried to turn so he could fire his gun with his other hand. He was too weak to lift his weapon. Emily was stopping now to help him. He tried to tell her to keep going, but she said no. Mm. All right, so oh. so he smokes one of these turds brothers, and then they get him back while he's escaping. while he's trying to get away. Yeah, uh. dude, this is such. This was look. I got goosebumps, man. I don't know if it's a cold or because I'm like worried about him or what. Well, you know what? You, you shouldn't take an opportunity for granted. They should have fucked last night because you never know it's gonna be last night. <laughs> All right. So yeah, jokes so. on them. Yeah, fucking life's not gonna wait for you. Yeah. Okay, so. 
The guys are shooting at them. He, Travis falls off his freaking horse. Emily does not want to let him go. She obviously cares about him and won't admit it. And so she actually yeah, she's tries. She's still being fucking passive aggressive. Yeah. So she <laughs> drags his ass into the tree line trying to get to safety. I think finds like some kind of rocky boulder area um, and tucks themselves up in it. Gets his gun and stands in front of him to protect him. And baby, I would do that for you. Oh, that's adorable. I, I would do that, that for yeah, you. Thanks. All right, just so you know. Uh, somebody shoots me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like... Um, that's going to suck. She hears the two guys, Clifford and Roscoe, like talking in the distance. Like, um, I think they... I think they notice that she's set up to shoot them. And if they come out of the tree line or whatever, that she's got a clean shot. So mm. they basically start talking about that. They're going to starve her out or wait her out mm. or whatever. Mm. And well, she so. can eat Travis. <laughs> so she's yeah. going gonna to last longer. Well, maybe she loves him though. Start at the toes. Um, so she's like basically praying to God for some kind of help, you know, oh. what? Cause you know, so they're out in the middle of Jesus nowhere. This is going to come out of the wood line. Oh, the fucking <laughs> Pull two the Gatling out. guns and just mow <laughs> down the tree line. <laughs> yeah, basically. So you know what God sent her? One-eyed Jack. Oh, shit. Yeah, he did. All right. Miss Emily, are you all right? She heard the whisper coming from below the bluff. Who is it? No one answered until she repeated her question a second time. It's me, Jack. Jack, is that really you? I just said it was. Jesus's brother, <laughs> one-eyed Jack. <laughs> so she said, are you below Travis and me on the rocks? He said, I skittered out on a ledge. Don't worry. No one can get any higher without pitching off into the canyon. Jack, the O'Toole brothers are trying to kill us. I figured as much as soon as I heard the gunshots. I can't get to you, Miss Emily. Could you please go and get help? Travis was shot in the back. He's a goner then, Jack whispered. Mm, you bet anybody ever been shot in the back is 100% <laughs> kill rate. <laughs> so she said, no, she screamed in denial. All right. So anyway, she convinces Jack to go, but it's on some terms. Oh. Are you ready to hear yeah, these terms? Yeah, they had to sit down and negotiate a little bit while Travis yeah. is bleeding out. Well, he says, I, she was like, why the hell are you even here? He goes, I, I've come to declare my intentions. She's like, Jack, oh. now isn't the time. Please because go and Because she was help. all flirty with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, Travis, maybe it's time for you to go, and uh, I think old one-eyed yeah. Jack's about to pick up a nice pink rose. So he said, it'll cost you. I'm wanting the $5 back and five more so I can buy me some fancy courting clothes. Don't go getting the notion I'm wanting to marry you, though. I got something else in mind. I know. Oh. I was like, damn, this is about to get kinky. I um, am not here to marry you, girl. So, I just want to show your face in a pillow. So uh, she didn't quite answer, I don't think. And he's like, don't you want to know what I'm wanting? She mm. goes, yes, Jack, tell me what you want. She was like, this is not the fucking time. And he goes, I'm wanting you to have supper with me down at the dining room in the Pritchard Hotel. You got to latch onto my arm and let me walk you in, too. And you can't get up and leave before I do. Is it a deal? She said, yes, it's a deal. Hurry, Jack, and be careful. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So... She tells Travis it's going to be all right. Clifford O'Toole came flying across the entrance. She didn't flying. Even, <laughs> she didn't even have time to cock her gun before he reached the other side. She I had thought to, she was prepared to shoot somebody. Sort of. She had to put both hands on Travis's gun to keep it steady. Mm -hmm. her Hell arms, yeah, girl. I like it when you had both hands on my <laughs> gun, too. Yeah. Uh, her arms were outstretched in front of her. Tears streamed down her face. Oh, she's I know crying? You like that too. Fuck yeah, dude. I know, she's about that's to get Christmas blasted. favorite. <laughs> 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 she needed to concentrate and most of all she needed to pray Travis opened his eyes and looked at her he saw the gun in her hands heard her sob low in her throat oh <laughs> mm -hmm. you're sobbing <laughs> and you got a lot in your throat going girl and wanted more than anything to take her into his arms and comfort her but he couldn't move he knew something was wrong yet he couldn't figure out what it was I've never had my dick hard before well I think he had passed out and woke back up he didn't realize he'd been shot but he figures it out you know because oh, he feels yeah. the pain and he sees this and that bar to bar bar blah blah blah, blah. Uh, so anyway, she didn't know how long she sat there hoping and praying their situation. Oh, that, I said that wrong. Their situation was becoming hopeless. Dusk was fast approaching and she doubted help would arrive before nightfall. She reminded God that hopeless situations. Reminded him. <laughs> yeah. Like, let me tell you something, mister. Uh, God, just in case you forgot. Uh, <laughs> you forgot. Just like <laughs> you forgot that pony when I was seven. <laughs> I forgot my fucking Game Gear system when I was like nine. <laughs> this is the 1800s. Uh, so she reminded God that hopeless situations weren't difficult for him. And though she didn't know how 
She didn't know what would happen. She was fully prepared for the worst. Only one thought drove her now. She would die protecting the man she loved. Oh, see, I love these little novels like this. The woman is so heroic and the little turd boyfriend is being a fucking little bitch behind him. He shot. Wham. In the back. What the hell's wrong with his hands? Well, he passed out. He's oh, like, my ma- shut what up. if he he's woke paralyzed? Back we didn't say where in the back. It's not his booty. Well, then how does he know he's been shot? He figured he felt the pain and could tell he oh, couldn't so really move. So he's probably and okay then? He, then? I think felt he passed it? back out. Dude, whatever. Pick your bitch ass up, dude. <laughs> okay. I've been shot. So, <laughs> chapter nine. Sorry, that was chapter eight. Now we're at chapter nine. I'm still getting used to claw, 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 how many are in it? clawing out stuff. Well, this is just our third installment. This is seven, eight, and nine. So we're on nine. So this is about to end our episode. Right. Hang on, folks. If you're worried about Travis, just hang on. Hang on like Travis should I'm, hang uh, on. I'm worried about one eye jack. I, yeah, I mean, he was on a cliff, dude. I think that he's going to get some. Mm, just hold on. Just hold on. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, me too. He heard Emily whispered. She asked the stranger if there was still time to get to the Perkinson's home before dark. All right, so Travis is kind of waking back up from his stupor, and he's hearing people talk, and at this point, he's hearing Emily talk to somebody he's not recognizing. Right, and he's she's like, it's $10 for five minutes alone with the for passed out. Handy. With the passed out Travis fella. <laughs> hey, <laughs> opportunity's golden. Uh, just avoid his back. You can't really feel nothing. There. Dude, if there's, a, if there's a theme in this book, it's something like that, yeah. So, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Before dark. And it was only when she called the man Mr. Ryan that oh, everything no. clicked into place. His gaze moved from the gold case up to the blue eyes, then back again. Yep. No, it wasn't a pocket watch, as he had assumed. It was a compass. And the his bastard stepdad was standing in front of him. <laughs> the bastard pulling him every which way was wearing Cole's compass. Cole, his brother. Travis became incensed. He let out a low growl and tried to rip his brother's gift away from the stranger, but damn, he was so weak, he couldn't even lift his hand. The effort drained his strength. He felt as though someone had put a hand on top of his head and was shoving him under the water again, and then he slept. So see, he's coming in and out of consciousness. You gotta give him a little bit of fucking credit. I'm not giving him none. Travis came awake with a start to find Millie Perkins. We're back at Millie's house. Leaning over him with a razor in her hands. Instinctively, he knocked the razor out of her grasp and sent it flying across the room. It landed on the dresser, skated across, and dropped to the floor. I don't know why we needed that much fucking detail about where the fucking razor went. Because it doesn't come back in any of the parts. (laughs) Give me a break. Give me some other detail. Paid by the word, are we, Julie? Yes. He'd given Millie quite a start. She jumped back and let out a shout. Lord, you're quick. I see you finally decided to come back to us. I keep giving everybody a Texas accent, but we're not in Texas, so right. I'm sorry. Like Y'all, Montana I'm a hillbilly. We are. But maybe they sound like that, too. But I'm a hillbilly from the South, so this is just how I make people's voices sound. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how? I guess that's just how I think Christians sound, too. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <just laughs> we're all Southern hillbillies. How long have I been asleep? Travis asked. Sorry, that didn't even sound like a man, either. Off and on, almost four days now. So Travis has been out like four days. You need sleep to get your strength back. At least my, my butt's hurting. <laughs> so <laughs> Emily, why do you have so a much money? A train came through town, Travis. Oh, oh yeah, that's why your butt hurts. <laughs> he must have five dollars a cart, Travis. <laughs> So she's talking about what the doctor said, and she said, he must have been right because the glazed look is gone from your eyes now. I guess oh. he's fine. So she said, oh, so the doctor said, like, he would recover, basically. Yeah, he'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Anybody can take 50 fucking wings up the butthole. He'll be fine. So here's one of those moments in the freaking book where it's a three pages of a conversation retracing everything we already know. Nope. Skip so it. So I did. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> <clears throat> Millie tells Travis that Emily had just left that morning that he was awake, mm. awakening. Once with the one eye jag. Well, no, remember Daniel Ryan. Oh, that's right. She went with Daniel Ryan because, uh, you know, he's. Well, he was giving her a ride. He seems to be daddy in the story. Mm. So Millie is talking to Travis about it. And she says to him, guess you're going to have to go after her and ask her your questions. I can't answer them because he was asking all kinds of stuff like, why'd she leave? And why this and why that? Millie at one point, and I don't know, hang on. Uh, I think I, I might have skipped it, but at one point Millie tells Travis that Emily had not intended on marrying O'Toole. Her intentions were to go and tell him 
that she wasn't going to marry him. She just thought it was the decent thing to do. So Travis at this point is pissed. He's like, why would she go all that way to tell him she's not going to marry him? Because that story is not true. But then she leaves me <clears throat> on my potential deathbed, right? <clears throat> yeah, so because that story is made up. He's butthurt, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, One-eyed Jack even threw a load on here? Ooh. Well, I mean, yeah. he's not called one-eyed Jack for nothing. One-eyed Jack. And like, little one-eyed Jack. <laughs> these women are so Jeez. clever with the names of the people in their books. Mm. All right, so. It's Travis and his dingus. <laughs> Travis says, I'm going back to Golden Crest and shoot those bastard brothers before I do anything else. So Millie says, the old tools are already dead. A real nice gentleman shot them for you. It was a fair fight, I suppose, what with them trying to kill Emily and you. And the law is on his side, she added with a chuckle. No doubt about that. So. Mm, who took care of it? He didn't understand why she was so amused. I guess I should thank him. Is he still here? She shook her head. He took off right after he dropped you in that bed, but he stopped by yesterday on his way to Pritchard. Emily asked him if she could ride with him. You let her ride off with a stranger? He didn't seem like a stranger to us, Travis. John talked to him a good long while. John was downstairs having an early snort with old man Kylie when they left. <laughs> They're doing some cocaine downstairs? I was like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> having a snort? You want to go dancing? <laughs> yeah, like, what? <laughs> So, uh, let's see. Do you uh, want to go downstairs and have a toot? <laughs> <laughs> what do they call it um, in Letterkenny? Sneef? Sneef. Or something? Uh, my husband was going to take Emily, but he was convinced he should stay here and look out for me. There's a gang hiding in these hills. You remember John telling you about them. They've done a lot of killing and robbing. They even murdered a young mother and a little girl. Travis closed his eyes. The man was Daniel Ryan, wasn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. He That's remembered everything. Dad. He's been banging my mom. He was a dumpster baby. He stole my brother's fucking compass. And now he's running off with my wife after getting my own vengeance taken away from me. Yeah. Killed them brothers and shot me up. Yeah. So he said he was wearing my brother's compass. Yeah, and he's getting ready to get his D sucked on by Emily, too. And Millie says he sure was. Emily asked him to give it to her, but he wouldn't. Ooh. He let her hold the gold case and showed her how to open the little clasp so she could take the compass out and get a good look at it. Then he made her give it right back to him. He told her he had to return it to the lady it belonged to, and Emily understood. Now, Travis, don't look at me like that. The lawman saved your life, and Emily's too, because she never would have seen the O'Toole sneaking up on the two of you in the dark. They would have nabbed her for sure, and you know what would have happened then. Ryan got there in the nick of time. So that means when I jack, you know, went and got Ryan, and Ryan came and saved him, and burr, burr, burr. Anyway, so see, Travis was wrong all along. Ryan, Daniel Ryan's being I a good guy. I told you that yep. Travis mm -hmm. is a punk bitch, mm -hmm, dude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Travis, this is this is him in his head. He made up his mind on his way down to the kitchen. By God, he was going to that going. Uh, Sorry, gosh darn it. By God, he was going to go to Pritchard so he could tell the ungrateful woman exactly how he felt. He would get a proper goodbye out of her, too. And mm. that was <laughs> all he was willing to admit. Hell yeah. So, <clears throat> that's it. The book's over? No, but our oh. third installment. It sounds that's, like it's over. No, uh, he's got to go bitch at Emily now. That's it? Because, we got three more chapters because, of bitching at this girl? Because oh, he's, my God. Because he's butthurt that she didn't say goodbye. Goodbye.